Ben Bera Irakut was born in 1945 in a little village of Agaria at Mukongoro sub county in Kumi district. The 74 year old veteran journalist is currently a lecturer at All Saints University in Lira. Irakut remembers what it was like working during Amini's regime and he has no kind words for the former president. I had nothing to do with him, completely. Because he killed a lot of people. Sometimes journalists and editors in newsrooms would get into serious trouble for making errors in publications. Ira could still remember a specific headline in the People's Newspaper. I mean, reps, Nyerere. The word that should have been there instead of rape was rap. Somebody quietly put in E so as to put Ben Bella into trouble. I mean, he was not happy with the headline. Go and get him. Ben Bella. Ben Bella. Ooh. I said, who is Musei? The president, the field marshal. So for me, I said, eh. Hey, I might become a minister. Irakut did not realize that his life was in danger until he arrived at the president's office. He was called Madamungu, towing with a gun. And then my mind changed. The idea of becoming a minister vanished. Shortly after he was shown the newspaper with a shouting headline, Tears began to roll as Maria Mungu, one of the Amini's most feared officers, awaited his orders. But what did you say I did? I didn't know what he was talking about. Nothing. He was shouting at me. Eh? I was not hearing anything. Then the tears started to drop onto the newspaper. But up, but up, but up. But, uh, this interview was carried out as we were all sent into laughter by this comic command. The stomach, the stomach, turn. <laughs> yeah. The poo poo. <laughs> I said, now, how can I poo poo in the office of the president? So I close the hole behind and then after some time it exploded. <laughs> the bullet the area and it became smelly and Idi Amin could not stand it. The room was now smelling poo Currently, Irakut lives with one eye because of Amin. He lifted me, said, get out! So he lifted me up and boxed this eye. Having survived death, Ben Bera Irakut escaped to Kenya, where he spent about four years in exile, working at the East African Standard newspaper. So I started walking, walking, walking. It took me nine days. Earlier, as a court reporter, Irakut had witnessed the arrest of former Chief Justice Benedict Okiwanuka, who disappeared and his body has never been seen again. I was a reporter. It was 10 o'clock. We found him being put in the boot and then taken off. So we remain in shock. Up to now, I've never seen Ben Kuanoka. He also remembers a journalist who was also murdered because he wrote about the Israelis who were killed during and after the raid on Entebbe in 1976. That was my wife. 78-year-old Reverend Dr. Jackson Triagenda also has his memories of Amini's tyrannical regime. I worked under fear, but worked wisely. As wise as a serpent, but as harmless as a dove. 
Today, Agenda served as the press secretary of the Anglican Church of Uganda, as well as press secretary to the Archbishop John Andrumo, who was allegedly murdered by the regime for supporting rebels. It's alleged that Archbishop Luum was collaborated with the ferrying in arms. But he himself said to me, Jackson, all those are fabricated lies. I don't know what God wants me to do now, but I'm ready for the worst. Then the old soldiers in a chorus said, Chinja yeye, Chinja yeye, Chinja yeye leo. Turiagina says the church had already applied to start a radio station in Mukono, but the application was rejected by government. But the government said only the government has the right to establish the media. Being one of the first Anglican clergymen to show interest in journalism, he was seconded by his boss, Archbishop Ruomo, for training in Nairobi. When he returned from Nairobi, one of the first things Reverend Triagena remembers witnessing was a public execution. About 12 people lined up in the Kabale Stadium and the army shooting them dead in that background. That was one of the scaring things that I recall. It was very scary. And if you were a journalist then, you had a very little to offer. Amin had also ordered the media never to mention anything concerning Israel on radio or television, and BBC had also been banned. I had to change the tactics. My, one of the steps of my tactic was to call it the Hebrews, our Hebraio. The situation worsened when the army invaded his home in Mukono. He was forced to flee to Karamoja together with his family members. Run, going to Kenya, escaping Amin. I reached Jinja. They said Amin has been shelled here. You are going to die here. I drove my car straight going to the Bustia border. They told me the war is, is waging there. Though to Agenda 2, has a low opinion of Amini. He recognized that Amini was instrumental in transforming Uganda's media, especially the broadcast media. Jingo Francis, NTV.